I don't think there was a big deal of lipedema 100 years ago. It's a fairly modern problem. The modern diet is so much higher in oxalate than ever before, so consistent, so year round. It's every day now. It used to be that diets were seasonal and they're not anymore. This is a toxicity problem. This is not a sensitivity or an allergy. It's not like gluten. And with toxins, dose is the issue. And this is the greatest example of citizen science. People started coming to me saying their lipedema improved on a low oxalate diet. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to highlight the topic of lipedema I discussed with the amazing Sally K. Norton a while back. I thought it was important to highlight here the questions about oxalate and lipedema. For example, does a low oxalate or carnivore diet help with lipedema? And could oxalates be causing the symptoms of lipedema? And why are we so in the dark when it comes to the state of research as it relates to lipedema? So stay where you are for some incredible insights from Sally that I hadn't realized, as well as the answers to those questions. Lippy ladies, this one's for you. There does not seem to be very much research discussing the connection. Is, is there a connection at all between oxalate overload and lipedema development or symptoms of lipedema? Probably. And it is a completely unknown connection, completely. This is the greatest example of citizen science. People started coming to me saying their lipedema, Angela Parsons being the first and the real breakthrough person, she deserves a lot of credit for being such an active patient, trying to figure out what the heck. And she attends these conferences that includes the physicians and the surgeons who help these patients. She found my book, she started doing this diet and her lipedema started going away. And she shared this in a conference and she found that the world renowned American surgeon who does liposuction for these women reports grit in these fat samples that come out of their body. Is that so? Mm -hmm. I mean, th I'll tell you, I've had so many improvements in switching to, I would say, I would say an extremely low oxalate diet, because like I said, I do still include spice. I've never eliminated spices. I do still include cocoa. One of the things that got so much better for me was the pain of my lipedema. And I've got to then now wonder like if it's, if I'm having these improvements alongside all the other things that carnivore can do for people if lowering the oxalate is helping with the, my lipedema because it has not progressed. What I've seen is that lipedema, this sad tale of it only is progressive. It's going to get worse as you age. And I haven't seen that. I've seen it go sort of back in stage and in, you know, development and all of my symptoms have been reduced. I mean, that's fantastic. And, I, and when people say, Oh, you, you just credit this, you know, you, you credit carnivore for everything, or you, you think that oxalate's to blame for everything, but maybe then, yeah, there is a connection there. The grit that he's seeing, are they like the same as kidney stones grit? A crystalline material. The grit is obviously calcium crystalline material, very likely to be calcium oxalate or another form of calcification that the oxalate will cause in tissues. There's no question that some subtypes of oxalate poisoning, you see the cystic tendency. This is a toxicity problem. This is not a sensitivity or an allergy. It's not like gluten. It is a toxicity. And with toxins, dose is the issue. We have to know how much we can handle and manage. And that varies from person to person. Some people, you can literally kill a person with oxalic acid. This is the oxalate that's in the plants, right? You literally can kill someone in that amount that it takes to kill them varies anywhere from three or four grams up to 15 grams. So this is a huge window of toxicity. And so there's fat lipid, lipid crystals can form that aren't even gritty. So I don't think you even have to have grit to have a uh, lipid uh, hyper proliferation of lipid materials in the body. And so you've got this hyper proliferation response to the genetic damage and the oxidative stress caused by the oxalates that get stuck in connective tissues. Fat is a major connective tissue and a metabolic, very metabolically active tissue. And some people really do get cysts in response to the crystal formation in tissues. You stop loading up the capillaries full of oxalate and keep, stop delivering oxalate to the tissues and the tissues can, seem to be able to calm down and start reversing this process. It's really 
cool that the body can heal it really cool. That is, that is really, really cool. I mean, I'm so happy to hear you say that, that there is some basis to the theory that it, they are connected because it's just another reason to tell people with lip edema, you know, another thing that we can give them a tool in their toolbox to say, this could help you. We, we search for answers all over the internet and there is just not any discussion of lowering oxalate for helping with lip edema. We always just hear about a surgery is needed or manual lymphatic drainage is needed or compression is needed. And, and sorry, Charlie, you're out of luck. It's going to progress. So thank Angela for this insight. She's really in my world. She read my book and she came to me and reported her experience. She's, her story is on my YouTube channel. I have a series of testimonial stories and she shared as well there on my YouTube channel. So you can check out her story there because she deserves a lot of credit for citizen science, for being involved in her community of her disease type and then reaching out and sharing it. And so the combination of having my book out and having people like Angela in the community is helping us observe phenomenon that is being lost on science. The men with their lipid samples or the lipid extracted from bodies, put it in a bio waste bag and throw it out instead of taking it to the lab for examination and make it part of a tissue, tissue um, database where researchers can start studying this tissue and see what's going on in it. Wow. I mean, that's fascinating. I had no idea. Thank you so much for sharing. And yes, thank you to Angela for, for helping instigate this. That's fantastic. So well, Sally, thank you. For alerting us to this possibility. And I believe reality. If reality tells us something, I'm going with that. Right. And we, and we see the improvements and I'm not the only person who has, you know, gone low oxalate carnivore for me that has seen improvements in their lipedema. I've heard from several women who like a carnivore diet is helping them so much to, in addition to keeping insulin low and keeping inflammation down, it may be that it is a low oxalate diet and that is also helping their lipedema. So that's fantastic. It's well, to think about it too, because lipedema is a fairly modern problem. It's, I don't think there was a big deal of lipedema 100 years ago. And the modern diet is so much higher in oxalate than ever before, so consistent, so year round. We didn't have the same 24 hour a day, 600 and a half thousand days a year. I'm like, it's every day now. It used to be that diets were seasonal and they're not anymore. And that's adding to the potential for this oxalate poisoning. And lipedema is a great example of that, where modern illnesses are connected to modern ways of living. I'm just blown away. I'm like, I'm seriously speechless at it. Do you think that it is, in addition to the crystal settling in the fat, do you think that the, the fact that you've got these lipid, the proliferation of the lipid crystals, is that, could that be sort of like clogging up the signaling of the fat tissue, which is why it is so hard for women with lipedema to lose weight? What do you think the mechanism is there? I think there's a lymphatics problem where the lymphatics are no longer able to drain the tissues. And so that adds to this kind of heaviness and the, in the, um, the pathology of this tissue is stressed, lots of oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction. And you get this kind of self-perpetuating cycle that the inflammation can get into and you don't have effective lymph drainage, it just becomes a mess in there. So you, you need a certain amount of tissue healing where the capillaries and the lymph tissue start working better again. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I'm sticking with it. I mean, I love it.